Terraform FX is being updated with some new features, including an amazingly powerful new procedural texturing tool and terrain map generator. Let's have a look at the brand new advanced terrain shader then that brings these amazingly detailed and intricate materials to your landscapes. They look great in the viewport, they work in all render engines that can use Cinema 4D shaders. Let's have a look at the basics then. Terrains now come with a material pre-applied and in that material in the colour channel is the advanced terrain shader. This uses the data channels generated by the terrain to mix colours for our landscapes. Let's just clear this out and we'll add a terrain layer. Now this blends the various data channels like altitude and curvature and it produces this black and white map. Here we're just using the altitude data, the white parts are high, dark bits are low. But we've also got curvature data which we can blend, ambient occlusion and then add noise variation, large scale and small scale jitter. Let's just make some adjustments to our map and when we're happy we can then use this to map our colour palette. We'll activate the default colour palette and now those colours are mapped to the black and white values. We can then add post-processing layers that you'll be familiar with like a normalise to ensure we're getting the full range of colours. And we can see if we A, B that material on and off just how much detail we've managed to get from that terrain data. Now let's have a look at mixing layers using masking. So we have one base terrain layer here. We're gonna rename it rock, switch off the coloring, and just make a few adjustments to our terrain data to get a nice black and white rocky look. That looks good. So now we'll create a new terrain layer, and this one we're gonna put on top, and this is gonna be our grass. We'll just switch off the colouring for now and just make a few adjustments to that black and white map until we've got something that we're happy with. When we finish that, we'll activate our palette colouring. And if we click on this, we get our colour palette. And we have an option of looking at surfaces where we have these different palettes of different surfaces like sand, rock and lava or countries. And we have this huge global list of countries, each of which has its own colour palette library. And these colour palettes are sampled from actual satellite imagery for accuracy. Let's select this one from Germany and there we have our grass layer. So now we want to mask this on top of our rock. So we're going to bring in a new terrain layer and call it mask. And all we need to do is make this a child of our grass layer. Before we do that, let's switch the color off and have a look at the black and white map. Where this is white, the grass is going to show through. Where it is black, the rock is going to show through. So there, if we put it as a child of our grass, yes, we've got that look. Now we may want to adjust this further, so let's go back to our mask, we'll click on preview current layer, so we're just going to look at the mask, and now let's add some post processing, we're going to add a curves adjustment layer here, and we can add some contrast by crushing that curve, and that is going to affect the way in which that mask works with our grass and rock layer. We're going to get a much more defined line. Let's add a little bit of jitter just to break that line up a bit. We'll switch off our preview current layer. And yes, now we have got the perfect mixing of grass and rock textures. But let's say we want to add some water to this. Let's bring in a TF flood filter. And what we could do, let's just actually, let's switch off our material so we can see our flat flood plane. There it is. Now in our TF flood, if we go to the preview tab, you can see that it outputs a flood mask and a difference map. And we can use that data in our texturing. Now this can be set up manually, but we can do it automatically by just hitting add flooded layer. And then if we go into our advanced terrain shader, you can see, look, it's added a flood color and a flood mask using those two bits of data to do so. Let's take this moorland grass scene and add some manicured farming fields. We'll add an agricultural structures layer on top and there we get our fields. Now we can have this in a grid or a random configuration. We can adjust the number, the size of those fields. We can add more or less irregularity should we wish. 
And then we can add detailing to the fields with furrows. This gives the indication of plough lines and crop lines. We can also adjust or remove dirt roads between fields with fine control to adjust the look. Now we need to mask it and this time we're going to use a terrain operator layer. We can drag in our terrain or any operator in our object manager and use the data generated to mask our colours. So here we're using the altitude, we're going to add a gradation curve, we're going to invert those knots, so here we're only going to get the fields in the lower down areas. So now if we take off that preview, yes, we have our fields only in the lower down areas. We can now add another mask layer and this time we're going to use the slope information generated from our terrain to make sure we don't get the fields on the steep rocky bits. Again, we'll add a gradation curves, we'll invert it and make sure that all of those rocky bits are black, meaning they won't get any of the fields. That's looking good. So now if we take off that solo, yes, now our fields aren't quite high enough so we need to make an adjustment to our altitude curves. Let's just pull these knots out a little and it will raise the altitude of those fields. Yes, that's what we want. And there we have our agricultural structures layer. We can use the advanced terrain shader live like this in any render engine that supports Cinema 4D shaders, but we can also export these maps in any resolution, we can bake the entire texture down, we can bake all individual layers, we can select individual layers to bake, and these can be exported as 8, 16 or 32-bit TIFFs. The new Advanced Terrain Shader is incredibly powerful. From its huge library of colour palettes sampled from satellite imagery, the use of multiple channels of data generated from the terrain, layer blending and post-processing filters, Cinema 4D Shader and Field Support. Just some of the features that make the Advanced Terrain Shader such a powerful new tool. Creating realistic materials for terrains has never been so sophisticated, yet easy and intuitive. The Advanced Terrain Shader is just one of the new features for Terraform effects, making generating and artistically manipulating procedural terrains easier than ever before. And it's coming soon to Insidium Fused.